Hello there! This is Teacher Im and I prepare videos to help my students score better in their STPM Maths Tip Paper and I hope my video can be helpful for you too. So today, this video is actually a continuous video from my live show previously where I gave six questions but we managed to discuss four questions during the live show. Alright, so this is the other two questions on rate of change and we will be discussing question number five and six in this video. Let's get to it. Well, 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 this is the second part of my video. It is a continuous video from my live chat previously. I promised six questions but during the live because I gave some tips and tricks so it's kind of dragged a little bit of the time and then we couldn't finish the other two more questions which I will be discussing in this video. Alright, so question number five. All this question you can get it from my PDF which I already left a link in the description box and there will be six questions in it. Four I have already discussed and this is the fifth question. Okay, according to this question, a particle moves along a curve. So, find a point at the curve where both x and y coordinate at the part of the particle change at the same rate. So, we can imagine having two particles as so, and both of them are actually moving towards each other and touching at one place where they have actually have the same uh, rate of change or maybe the same gradient. Basic idea like that, right? Not perfectly true, but basically that is the concept. So where to do this question, I will do uh, by start, I will start the question by differentiating it implicitly with respect to t because according to the question, they want x and y say to the same rate okay so i will differentiate this first just like you differentiate the x uh, or the y over uh, with respect to x when we differentiate this with respect to t whatever element that we differentiate actually will have the y over the t or the x over the t means we have something with dt Alright, so we will differentiate this just like normal differentiation to x, but because we are differentiating it with respect to t, so we will write the x dt and we differentiate 2x, so same, we get 2, and with respect to t, we get the x dt. Okay, now that I'm done with that, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to factorize the both this dx dt out. So it will get something like this. Once I get this, once I'm done with this, I will kind of see what is given inside the question. When both x and y coordinates of the particle change at the same rate. So which means dy over dt and dx over dt are exactly the same. Okay. So what's actually happening, right? What's actually happening? So what I'm going to do here is the place for dx over dt over here, dx over dt, I'm going to change it with the, some details, right? So the place for dy over dt, I already changed it with dx over dt. So taking that, okay, I will kind of uh, simplify it and I will notice I will actually get my x. Once I get my x already, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into the equation of y and calculate my y because according to the question, find a point. Okay, find a point means they wanted a coordinate. So I'm going to write this in the form of coordinates. So that is the coordinates that I actually have where the value of x and y are changing at the same rate. Okay, so that is question number five. Super easy. It's an easy question. Right, question number six. Now, according to this question number six, they say a lighthouse L is located on a small island 
two kilometer from the nearest point A on a long straight shoreline. So if the lighthouse, so I'm going to sketch the lighthouse and make sure I have all the details. So the lighthouse is about two kilometer from the shore. And then I'm going to put in all my variables like I mentioned in during the live class. You have to label everything. All your variables need to be clear uh, so that whenever you calculate something, it won't give you any trouble when you want to put in any variables. Okay, so I'm going to use the x as the distance of AP and the theta as the angle for PL. A. So that is the angle over here, right? PLA theta. So I mark everything in the picture so that it's easier for me to calculate. So according to this question, there is not much details other than the x, uh, the value 2 kilometer over here. So the only thing that we can use to help us solve this question is from the diagram. So from the diagram, we know x is actually two tangent theta right remember your trigo from your same one so two tangent theta is at the value of our x so we differentiate dx over dt so we will get what we need so we get two second squared d theta dt once we differentiated the details because why i differentiate it uh, to dt because i'm talking about rate all right, I'm talking about rate, so definitely I need to differentiate it implicitly to dt. All right, to dt. So now I got all the details. I need more details to help me get to, to finish the question. So if the lighthouse lamp rotates at three rotation per minute, so which means you imagine it rotates three rotation per minute, we need some other details. Okay, so d theta over dt is 3 rotation per minute but you have to remember that rotation is 2 pi radian i calculate it in radian form so i have 2 pi radian means it's a full circle around the lighthouse you imagine those light running through the lighthouse as so okay so we are going to calculate the d theta over dt so what we are going to do is we will multiply this nicely so we will get 6 pi radian per minute. So we know that those are the rotation time. Okay, to 6 pi radian per minute. So now the question asks, how fast is the illuminating spot? Means you imagine when you on the shore, the light will when the light is showing uh it is rotating like this so some way somehow you will notice that the light is just like a spotlight moving from one place to another okay so now they say how fast is the illumination so you was imagining the the lights moving from one place to the other okay p on the shore moving along the shoreline shoreline when it is four kilometer from a so remember our uh, diagram just now that is a four kilometer distance from a so we will move in with x equals to four and we will start to put in the details okay so we have two tangent theta so our x is four so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change it there so i will get tangent theta equals to two but what is it to do with our time how fast okay how fast so we don't have that idea yet so i'm going to apply one formula okay to help me to do so so i'm going to apply this formula why is that so because i notice in this position here my dx over dt i actually have second and my details over here I have tangent so the only thing like i say in my last step i have to match everything together so the things that i can match them together is by using this formula second squared theta equals to one plus tangent squared theta so that is where i'm going to use uh that this is what i'm going to use to help me solve that question okay so i move on to this part over here okay i'm going to put it 
some put in some details okay so i move it over here so all the details that i have the tangent theta is equals to 2 d theta over dt i just a shift from previous part there to to bring it over so that you all can see what exactly what we have okay and I, then i'm going to change the details so the second squared theta i'm going to change with one plus tangent squared theta okay multiply with all the details that i have okay so now i'm going to put in all the details so the tangent squared theta is two so i'm going to put in the first detail and then I have the second details as so. So if this question asking uh, the, how fast the rotation is, so I can actually calculate. And if I want a perfect answer, I can actually answer the question fully. The spot of the light is moving along the shoreline at the rate of about 189 km per minute when it is 4 km from A. I can actually tell the examiner the full answer okay so you can uh, leave your answer as so like i told you four significant feature right so make sure your answer is in the perfect format all right so i guess that's all that i'm have for you today so i will see you in my next video right so bye was it helpful? Like I say, this is the second part of my video because the first part is actually in my live session. And if you have not seen it, please do click on it. Okay, so I will see you in my next video. Do give me a thumbs up, hit the like button, and please share this video with all your friends. I will see you next time. Bye!